We all want to step out of our lives at one time or another. It could be to imagine you are someone else, like a famous actress or a rock star. Or perhaps you're into cosplay and want to dress up like your favorite character from a movie or, say, a comic book. Maybe your life isn't exactly going the way you want it to, and you simply want to escape from it all, assume another identity, and start all over again. Many people have done so in the past with varying degrees of success. In 1548, a man by the name of Martin Gear disappeared, leaving behind a wife and child. And in 1556, a man showed up on their doorstep claiming to be the long-lost husband. He was later found to be a fraud and was subsequently hanged for the trouble he'd caused. But sometimes, someone steps into another person's shoes completely by accident. And that would be the most terrifying instance of all. I'm not talking about a case of mistaken identity. At least, that's not what happened to Lorena Gassier Godot. As far as Miss Godot was concerned, she wanted nothing to do with her new identity. She wanted her old one back. And it's all because of a strange encounter with a rip in the very fabric of the universe. On July 16, 2008, a very peculiar comment showed up on a blog post. The post can still be found on the Spanish digital magazine Trends21 or Tendencias21.com. The post itself isn't strange or odd. It talks about the very real possibility that we may exist in a multiverse. But it's the comment section that grabbed the most attention. Well, one comment actually. That being from Lorena Garcia Godot. Now, what made her posted comment so special? Miss Gordeaux claimed that she woke up one morning and found herself a stranger in a strange land. A land she recognized, which recognized her, but was somehow not the way she'd left it when she'd fallen asleep the night before. And at the time of her comment, she'd been living with this for the last four months, navigating a world she didn't belong in. It all started the previous March, when her alarm clock woke her up for work. Something didn't feel quite right, but she wasn't sure what it was until she turned on the light. The bed sheets were different. They weren't the same ones that had been on her bed when she'd gone to sleep. And neither were the pajamas she woke up in. They were hers, but it was certainly a confusing situation. Had she gotten up in the middle of the night to change not only what she was wearing, but also change her sheets? Didn't make any sense. But she had to get to work, so the small mystery of the bed sheets and the pajamas had to be set aside. She'd worry about it later. So Miss Gordeaux went about her normal morning routine, and the bed sheets were soon forgotten. She showered, dressed, had a quick breakfast, hopped in her car, and made her way to work. And then life became not only strange, but bizarre. For the last 20 years, she'd worked at the same company. She could make it from her front door to her desk pretty much with her eyes closed. That was no problem. What was a problem was the man in her office. Not only was he in her office, he was sitting at what used to be her desk. She looked at the nameplate on the door, and it wasn't hers. She looked around. Maybe she'd gotten off on the wrong floor. And then she noticed something else that was off. The company's logo on the wall. Something wasn't right about it either. It had changed. What was going on? Why would a brand that had been going strong for the last two decades of her employment suddenly change their logo? Why hadn't she noticed it before or even been notified? And, more importantly, why had her office been moved and where was she supposed to go? Confused and feeling a bit disoriented, Lorena pulled out her phone and checked the company's directory. And there it was, her office. But it was on a different floor. But the floor it was on was an entirely different department and a department she'd never heard of. Surely they couldn't have rearranged an entire company structure, desks and all, overnight. Had she missed an email? And how could it have happened so fast? She then accessed her internal company profile. That had changed as well. She was reporting to a different person now. 
Then she remembered the bedsheets and the pajamas from earlier that morning. What was happening? Lorena had to sit down for a moment to collect herself, which is understandable, and she checked to see if anything else had changed overnight. She checked her driver's license, and that was okay. It had her name, Lorena Garcia Gordo, age 41. Nothing wrong there. Her credit cards were the same as well, as was her work ID with the slightly altered company logo emblazoned on it. So Lorena put her things back together, shot off a quick note that she wasn't feeling well, and left the building. On her way home, she went over everything that had changed. She was sure there was an explanation, but she couldn't find her way to it. She'd even considered the possibility that maybe she'd been sick for a few days and had lost time, enough so that things could have changed at work without her knowing. But the date didn't reflect that. None of it made any sense whatsoever. And it got worse. Safely back in her apartment, Lorena began to notice something else. Her things. They were hers, but they had changed in subtle ways as well. Things like the placement of the furniture, the wall a picture might have hung on, and the arrangement of her clothes in the closet. And then there were the things that weren't hers. They belonged to her ex-boyfriend, Miguel, a man she dated for seven years, but whom she'd broken up with six months before. She had a new boyfriend now, Augustine, a man she'd started dating shortly after her breakup and who lived a short walk away. Why would she find Miguel's things in her apartment four months later? Things he'd taken with him. Why would he bring them back and what had he been doing in her apartment? The fear, anger, and confusion was overwhelming. So she called Augustine. Hello? It wasn't Augustine. She looked at the number she dialed. She called the right number. And afraid of what she might find, Lorena left her apartment and went straight to Augustine's. Augustine didn't live there. Not only did he not live there, according to the people who did, they had never heard of him, or his young son whom Lorena had even met. The next few hours were a blur. Back in her apartment, Lorena scanned the previous days and weeks headlines, and it was just as she remembered them. The world news that she'd gone to bed to the night before was still the world news she'd woken up to. There was no mention of anything strange or different. It was only her own little world that had changed. On a small scale, relatively speaking, but it had upended everything. Was she going crazy? That was almost an obvious answer, and if the world was the same, then it had to be her. But that didn't explain Augustine or the fact that some of Miguel's things were scattered about her house. What would she say when Miguel even got back? In her mind, they hadn't been together for six months. Would she kick him out? And how would she find Augustine? Where was he? The big question facing her now was, what does she do now? What do you do when you find yourself living a slightly altered life overnight? You go on. That was Lorena's decision. She had to go on. And along the way, she would piece together what had happened. But one of the things that she would do was find Augustine. So she hired a private investigator. Days later, the terrible news came back. The man she'd known for the last four months never existed. There had been no Augustine. Not at the apartment building where he'd lived, and not at the phone number she'd called many times before. Did that mean he'd been a figment of her imagination? Was this all in her head? To find out, Lorena went to see a psychiatrist. And the verdict? Stress. According to the psychiatrist, Lorena's symptoms and hallucinations could very well be stress-related. Lorena was having none of it. How could stress, of which she felt none until this all happened, account for her missing boyfriend of four months? And what about the other things she'd experienced? She'd even been in touch with her family. When she asked about a surgery her sister had had on her arm, she learned no such operation had ever taken place. They didn't know what she was talking about. Even her own investigations turned up small inconsistencies. Emails were missing that she knew she'd saved. Comments she'd made online prior to all of this were gone. It was as if the Lorena from before had led a slightly altered life from the one she'd remembered. So on July 16, 2008, Lorena's search brought her to articles about the potentiality of a multiverse. It was all theoretical, of course. There's no proof that there are multiple universes or even dimensions, but it's becoming more and more probable that it's true. 
There is even the growing possibility that there are multiple versions of yourself living in these other mirror universes, versions whose decisions might have been different than yours. Lorena clicked on a link to an article about these possibilities and asked for help. I'm 41 years old and I think I've jumped into a parallel universe. And the rest it's hard for me is to history. Because everyone's going to or is it? If not Lorena's history, then whose? Imagine waking up and believing that the things around you, your bed, your kitchen table, your coffee pot, maybe even your partner, isn't the same as when you'd gone to sleep the night before. What if everything appears to be the same, yet isn't? There is a syndrome called Capgras that explains a bit of this, where one believes their possessions or the people they interact with have been replaced by replicas. But it doesn't explain Lorena's situation. Capgras doesn't account for missing boyfriends or even alterations in one's life, like your job or, say, a family member's surgery. So what is Lorena Garcia Godot doing now? It's hard to say since she hasn't posted anything since. It is very likely that the name she used in her original post was a false one to protect her anonymity, if it was true, of course. Her original post remains, however, still there for the world to see. Or, perhaps, for the multiverse to see. You might catch one of these multiverses flickering on the periphery. Science tells us that there are many of these. Parallel worlds where there exists another you. But one question remains. Of the Lorena Garcia Gordo that existed in this world prior to July 16, 2008, our Lorena... What became of her? Thank you for listening. If you haven't already, please subscribe and leave a review. It does help immensely. And if you know someone who might enjoy the show, tell them about it. You can also help the show by going to strangeencounters.org. I would really like to hear your suggestions for future episodes. And if you've had a strange encounter with something unusual or paranormal, I'd love to hear it. Visit the contact page for information on submitting your story. And until next time, please take care of yourself. It's a strange world out there. Good night. Sid Z. Sid. Making a show, I'm Blizzard Ash in the Nitzel.